Hi everybody, uh, my name is Stefano Luminari. I am Assistant Professor of Oncology at the University of Modena Reggio Emilia. My clinical research activity is mainly focused on lymphoma research and in particular in the development of clinical trials in lymphoma. The case I'm going to present today is uh, about a 23-year-old female that I met in 2008 because uh, a few days before the visit she had with me, this lady uh, referred about painful swelling of the, the right neck and uh, due to this, for this reason she, she came to my office. I <coughs> saw her and I realized that she had nothing particularly serious in her history. She was mother of a five-year-old daughter and she worked uh, in a grocery store. When I visited her, she presented the, uh, the enlarged nodes in the neck and in the supraclavicular supra region, uh, each with a size of approximately 1.5 centimeter. After the visit, I asked, uh, I prescribed laboratory tests, including complete blood count with the differential, hepatic and renal function tests, protein electrophoresis, LDH, uh, serology tests for EBV, CMV, toxoplasmosis and HIV, and uh, inflammatory tests, namely erythrocyte sedimentation rate and C-reactive protein. I also prescribed an ultrasound exam of the neck. When she came back to my office with the results of the lab tests, uh, these lab tests showed uh, an increased sedimentation rate, uh, as well as uh, neutrophilic leukocytosis of approximately 13,000 leukocytes per microliter and also she showed low lev albumin levels. Uh, the ultrasound of the neck confirmed the pathologic findings uh, of enlarged nodes with the pathological aspects uh, with a size of approximately 3, 3 by 2 and 2 by 3 centimeters in the, in the two sides of the neck and the supraclavicular regions. Uh, based on the results of these initial findings, I prescribed an excisional biopsy that she had a few days ago, a few days after. The procedure was well tolerated and the histological finding of the biopsy confirmed my initial suspicion of a classical Hodgkin lymphoma of nodular sclerosis subtype that was also typical in terms of uh, immunophenotypic reaction. The, the, the pathologic findings showed, confirmed the positivity for CD30 and CD15 by markers. A complete staging of this patient was performed with a CT scan of the neck, thorax and abdomen with the iodine contrast medium and an FDG PET scan and also with a bone marrow biopsy. The CT scan showed a large node in the supraclavicular and cervical region in the upper mediastinum including paratracheal, prevascular, subcarinal and bilateral lung hilum sites and bilaterally in the axillas. The longest diameter of the largest node was five centimeters, so no bulky in this patient. Also, several lung nodules were described in both lungs uh, of approximately one centimeter, and also the spleen had a normal site but was disseminated with several hypodense nodules. Finally, a vaguely defined osteosclerotic area was described in the left side of the sacrum bone, but the nature of this finding was not clearly and easily defined by the CT scan. The PET scan was also performed, which revealed marked hypermetabolic nodes bilaterally in the lateral cervical, supraclavicular and axillary regions, in the mediastinum and in the lungs. So the lung nodes were positive at PET scan. The spleen, however, was normal. So the initial finding of the CT scan was not confirmed by PET. And uh, uh, finally, the increased, uh, the increased uptake of uh, FTG was also observed in the left side of the sacrum, where the CT scan described that vogue uh, hypersclerotic uh, area. The bone marrow biopsy was performed and was negative for lymphoma. So based on the initial finding and the staging workup in this 23-year-old patient, uh, the final diagnosis was that of a classical Hodgkin lymphoma nodular sclerosis type stage 4A. According to the International Prognostic Index, her uh, prognostic score was two in a scale of from zero to seven uh, due to the advanced stage and to the presence of, of low albumin. Then this patient can be classified as having an advanced stage low risk Hodgkin lymphoma.
The initial treatment options were discussed with this patient and uh, she agreed to start with a BVD chemotherapy with a planned program of six cycles. Uh, before starting treatment, we also uh, informed the patient that uh, there was a, a limited but present real risk of infertility induced by chemotherapy. And although the risk was uh, considered uh, low with the BVD chemotherapy, a decision to start with LHRH analog for the entire course of chemotherapy was done. The ABVD treatment was administered regularly, were overall well tolerated, without significant toxicity uh, and without significant treatment delays. The patient only experienced grade 2 to 3 uh, neutropenia during the cycle 1 and 2 that was treated with the uh, granulocyte growth factors. After the second ABVD, we performed a PET scan to check for interim response that was negative and did not show any a uh, residual site of increased uh, glucose metabolism. So what consistent with the complete remission also after uh, two cycles of FBV, FBVD. After the completion of the sixth ABVD, uh, then a complete restaging of the patient was done with CT scan and again with, the FD, with an uh, FTG PET scan. This scan showed a regression of, the, of all the nodes to a site of uh, less than 1.5 centimeters. Uh, the lung nodes disappeared completely. So the, the, the picture of the CT scan was consistent with a complete remission. The FDG PET scan also confirmed the disappearance of all the area of hypermetabolic, all the hypermetabolic areas that were present at, uh, the, at baseline, but uh, showed also the reappearance of a, a slight metabolism uh, increased uh, uptake of glucose in the left sacrum bone. So the, the correct interpretation of the sacrum finding was considered crucial for the definition of the response in this patient because uh, this response could range from a complete response to a partial response or also to a progressive disease if the sacrum finding was uh, correlated somehow with the lymphoma or if it has nothing to do with lymphoma. So in order to be uh, very cautious with interpretation, very strict in the interpretation of this finding, the patient underwent a, a magnetic resonance image test of the sacrum that uh, did not allow us to interpret further the finding in the sacrum bone. So another decision of uh, performing a, a new PET scan after uh, a while, uh, in two months, was done. And uh, this new FDG PET scan was uh, was done, the patient was asymptomatic, had no symptoms in, in, in the bone, and the, the new PET scan confirmed the presence of an hepatometabolic site in the left sacrum and also showed uh, an area of uh, increased metabolism in the mediastinum. So as hypermediastinum uptake could be also consistent with a, a, a thymic rebound that is not uncommon in young patients that uh, receive chemotherapy, after the interruption of the chemotherapy program, uh, we decided to perform a CT-guided biopsy of the left sacrum site. This procedure was done, was easily performed, it was well tolerated, and the pathologic findings that came from this biopsy confirmed, unfortunately, the presence of Hodgkin lymphoma in the bone. So the patient was uh, considered as having achieved a partial response to ABVD based on the histological confirmation of the PET finding. This condition was consistent with the, that of a refractory Hodgkin lymphoma after ABVD program. The need for salvage therapy was then discussed with the patient who was offered to start with a, a second line therapy with different aims. The first aim was that of achieving a new complete remission in the lymphoma. The second aim was that of mobilizing uh, stem cell, autologous stem cells, and harvesting them from the, the blood, and then to proceed with high-dose therapy followed by, by the reinfusion of autologous stem cells, the so-called autotransplant. The patient agreed to restart this treatment and uh, was then admitted to the hospital when she received the high-gev salvage chemotherapy that consisted of a combination of iphosphamide, uh, gemcitabine, vinorelbin, and dexamethasone. He received a total of four cycles of IGEV, and after cycle two, peripheral blood stem cells were successfully harvested with a single procedure.
An FTG PET was, scan was done after cycle two and cycle four, and both show the complete disappearance of the disease. So the patient uh, also after the second IGF chemotherapy had a new complete remission. At the end of the IGF program, was, the patient was then complete, considered in complete remission and was admitted in the transplant unit where she received the, the team conditioning regimen, that is Tiotipa, Cytarabine, Etoposide, and Melphalan, followed by peripheral blood cell, some blood stem cell transfusion. She got 5.6 million CD34 positive cells per kilogram. The recovery of blood count uh, was obtained within two weeks uh, and the a plastic phase of this patient was only complicated by febrile neutropenia that was managed easily in the transplant unit. After the transplant, the response in this patient was reassessed with the CT scan and a PET scan, and the results of these tests were consistent with complete remission. Uh, the patient was then addressed to follow-up, and the subsequent follow-up uh, has now reached the sixth year and the patient did not experience any relapse. This patient had frequent visit, uh, initially every three months for the first year, then every six months uh, for subsequent years. And as she did not refer any suspect symptom and as a clinical examination did not uh, induce any suspect of relapse of the lymphoma, she had a C C CT scan initially after six months, every, every six months. And the follow-up is now continuing with annual visit that consists basically on physical exam and laboratory test. Her last CT scan was done in 2011, so two years after the, her transplant. She currently complains only of mild fatigue that does not have any impact on her quality of life, and she was back to her occupation.